Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Noasaurids were a family of small to medium-sized ceratosaurian theropods that were the sister group to the abelisaurids. Generally slender and fast-running, these animals first originated in the Middle Jurassic, being rather diverse in terms of lifestyle. Aside from a number of basal forms, Noasaurids can be divided into two main subfamilies, the Elaphrosaurines and the Noasaurines. The latter are more famous, being the first members of the group to be scientifically described during the 1980s. Native to the southern continents and dating to the late Cretaceous, Noasaurines are modestly sized agile carnivores that are unfortunately known from rather scrappy remains. Of the four known members of the subfamily, only one genus, the Madagascan Mashikasaurus, is represented by relatively complete fossil material. This animal possessed a series of unusual adaptations, particularly in regards to the skull, and it is currently uncertain if the strangeness of this genus was also applicable to other noasaurines, or if these features developed independently due to the isolation of its island home. Elaphrosaurines are known from the late Jurassic and Cretaceous, and appear to have originated on Laurasia before later spreading into Gondwana. These were strongly cursorial animals that superficially resembled not only the Ornithomimosaurs, but also the Shuvasaurid Pseudosuchians from the Triassic. Three genera have currently been described and named, with the late Jurassic Limusaurus of China being the best preserved. Unlike their Noasaurian relatives, these animals appear to have been at least partially herbivorous, with fully mature Limusaurus possessing toothless beaks. This diversity in form, as well as the rather patchy fossil record of Noasaurids as a whole, has made classifying the group rather difficult in the past. However, newer finds are now helping to shed light on these fascinating animals, although many large gaps did exist in our knowledge of Noasaurid evolution. It would perhaps be best to begin with the most basal Noasaurids, those genera that have been placed outside the two main subfamilies. Potentially the oldest of all of these animals was the genus Spinostrophius from the Middle Jurassic of Niger. Remains were disarticulated and were represented by vertebrae and hind limb elements, which suggest an animal rather large by the standards of the family, measuring at least 6 metres or 20 feet long and weighing over a thousand pounds. Although its phylogenetic placement is still uncertain, recent studies have suggested that Spinostrophius may be a basal noasaurid although this may be subject to change in the future. Most stem noasaurids appear to have been native to the late Cretaceous of India, with the genera Compsosuchus, Levisuchus, and Vitacrisaurus known from very scrappy remains solely consisting of vertebrae. Another vertebra-based genus, Ligabuino, is known from the early Cretaceous deposits of Patagonia and has been tentatively placed as a noasaurid. The mysterious Deltadromius, a large North African theropod from the late Cretaceous has also been considered to be a member of the family, with the most recent study concerning the animal in a 2020 paper by Nizir Ibrahim et al. placing the genus here. If Deltadromius was a noasaurid, it would be the largest known member of the group, although more finds are needed to clear up this situation. The recently described genus Aphromimus may also be a basal member of the group as well. The Elaphrosaurians have also been cause for confusion throughout the history of their paleontological study. Although the formation of the subfamily has only been acknowledged relatively recently, the first member to be described was actually named in the year 1920. Named by German paleontologist Werner Janesch on the basis of a relatively complete specimen that lacked a skull, Elaphrosaurus was a slender, leggy and long-necked theropod native to the Kimmeridgian stage of the late Jurassic of Tanzania. The construction of the neck vertebrae suggested that the skull would have been small in size and that the neck itself was rather stiff. In terms of size, Elaphrosaurus potentially measured up to 7.5 metres, or that is 24.6 feet long, and weighed in the region of 460 pounds. The animal was highly cursorial, demonstrating similarity to the later Cretaceous ornithomimosaurs, and was considered to have been a member of this group for much of the 20th century. It was only starting in the early 2000s that studies placed Elaphrosaurus as a ceratosaur of some kind, although still of uncertain affinities. The discovery of the related genus Limusaurus in 2009 helped both to confirm that Elaphrosaurus was a noasaurid and affirmed early speculation that it was a small skulled animal with herbivorous leanings. Interestingly, fragmentary material discovered from the Morrison Formation suggests that either this genus or a close relative was also present in the late Jurassic of North America. 
Limusaurus itself was an incredibly important find in this regard, as it is one of the most complete noosaurids so far described and preserves an intact skull. Native to the late Jurassic of China between 161 and 157 million years ago, this was a small slender animal measuring about 1.7 metres, or 5.7 feet long, and weighing 33 pounds. Like the much larger Elaphrosaurus, Limusaurus was a slender, long-legged animal clearly adapted for running, with adults possessing fully toothless beaks, suggestive of herbivorous diets. Gastrolis found in association with only adult specimens indicated dietary separation between young and mature animals. The forelimbs were tiny with heavily reduced digits, somewhat paralleling the condition in the related abelisaurids. Juvenile specimens retained teeth, which were gradually lost as the animals aged. Originally described on the basis of two specimens, a subadult and a fully grown individual that had died after becoming trapped in thick mud. This condition led to the genus's name, which means mud lizard. 17 additional animals were uncovered in 2017 from the same fossil locality, possibly suggesting that they either died as the result of a flash flood or re represent the remains of a social group. Limusaurus lived alongside the basal tyrannosauroid Guan Long and the small early ceratopsian Yin Long, as well as the large sauropod Mamenchisaurus in a warm, seasonally dry forested ecosystem composed of conifers with an understory of ferns and cycads. Both Elaphrosaurus and Limusaurus were late Jurassic animals, and it was assumed that the subfamily as a whole was restricted to this time period. However, the discovery of Huinculsaurus would change this view. Native to the late Cretaceous of Argentina between 97 and 93 million years ago, the genus was named in 2020 and was a slender, approximately 3 metre or 10 foot long animal. Like many noosaurids, it is only known from vertebrae, but these were distinctive enough to place Huinculsaurus as a close relative of Limusaurus. Interestingly, also in the year 2020, a cervical vertebra discovered at the early Cretaceous Albion U. Morella formation in Victoria, Australia, was assigned to Elaphrosaurinae being the first known member of the subfamily to be recovered from the continent. These discoveries demonstrate our very fragmentary understanding of noosaurid evolution, and it is likely that in future many more genera will be uncovered from across the southern continents, where elaphrosaurines filled an ecological niche held by ornithomimosaurs in Laurasia. The noosaurines, meanwhile, were animals native solely to the late Cretaceous period of former Gondwana. These were all rather small, carnivorous theropods, measuring between 1 to 2 metres long and possessing light builds. Only four genera are solidly referable to this subfamily, with three of these known from fragmentary fossil material. Noosaurus itself was the first to be described on the basis of two neck vertebrae, a partial maxilla and elements of the rear portion of the skull. The genus inhabited what is now Argentina roughly 70 million years ago and was clearly a small predator based on the presence of serrated teeth in the mandible. A deeply curved claw found in association with the holotype was once considered to have been a dromaeosaur-like sickle claw on the foot, although recent studies have shown that the claw actually belonged on the hand. How this unusual feature would have been utilised to capture prey is currently unknown. The related Velocisaurus was also native to Argentina, although more ancient at approximately 85 million years old. This animal is known from hind limb elements, which suggested it would have been a fast-running small predator about 1.5 metres, or 4.9 feet long. Another South American noosaurine was described in 2019 and named Vespasaurus. Discovered in southern Brazil, the dating of the holotype was somewhat difficult to pinpoint, but has been tentatively assigned to the early late Cretaceous, possibly being Cenomanian in age. The animal is known from well-preserved foot bones, teeth, and small portions of the skull. The most notable trait of Vespasaurus were its functionally monodactyl feet, with an enlarged third digit bearing most of the animal's weight. It was roughly the same size as Velocisaurus at about 1.5 metres long, and dwelt in an arid desert region. The most complete of all noosaurines, and the basis for their reconstructions, was the Madagascan Mashikasaurus. Named in 2001 on the basis of remains recovered from the late Cretaceous Maravarano formation, including around 40% of the skeleton, which were collected near the village of Berivotra. Several parts of the skull, including the distinctive teeth, were found here. The humerus, pubis, hind limbs, and several vertebrae were also collected. In 2019, additional specimens of Mashikasaurus were described. The brain case, premaxilla, 
facial bones, rib cage, and portions of the hand and pectoral girdle were discovered. The discovery of this new material clarified many aspects of Noah's sword anatomy, and made the genus among the best known dinosaurs. Adult individual probably measured around 2 meters or 6.6 .6 feet long, and weighed in the region of 40 pounds. The most distinctive characteristic of Mashikosaurus is the forward projecting front teeth. The teeth are heterodont, meaning that they have different shapes along the jaw. The first four dentary teeth of the lower jaw project forwards, with the first tooth angled only 10% above the horizontal. These teeth are long and spoon-shaped with hooked edges. Unlike the skulls of the related Abelisaurids, which are very deep, the skull of Mashikosaurus is long and low. Not including the highly modified jaws and teeth, the skull of Mashikosaurus possesses many general ceratosaurian characteristics, and overall its morphology is intermediate between abelisaurids and more basal ceratosaurs. The unusual teeth may have been adapted for seizing small prey, which this agile animal would have run down. There have also been suggestions that Mashikosaurus was specifically adapted for plucking small vertebrates out of their burrows, due to a combination of a long neck, curved teeth and narrow skull. It is currently unknown if this unique skull configuration was present in other noosaurines. Overall, noosaurids remain a somewhat mysterious group of theropods, although new discoveries are filling in the gaps. Indeed, much of their fossil history has yet to be discovered. Given that noosaurians are the sister lineage to the Elaphrosaurians, the two must have split during the Middle Jurassic, and yet all noosaurians are late Cretaceous animals. The existence of Huynculsaurus many millions of years later than its closest relatives suggests how a single find can change our view of when and where these dinosaurs lived. With this in mind, noosaurians of late Jurassic and early Cretaceous ages must still be out there awaiting discovery. Regardless, noosaurids as a whole are a diverse in terms of ecological niche, and present a nice example of convergent evolution, not only with ornithomimosaurs, but also with shuvasaurids. Although many uncertainties persist, particularly concerning the skull shape of noosaurians and the position of animals such as Deltadromius, future discoveries may well answer these questions. Only time will tell. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will concern the Bunyip, one of Australia's most famous cryptids. See you again soon. Cheerio.